Hey y'all, what's up, what's up, what's up? You already know, this is Peach. Um, I just pulled over at the park because I just wanted to talk to y'all for a second. I've been crying. I'm just leaving from hanging out with my mama. I've been with my mama since about 10.30 and it's now 3.30. It's now 3.30 in the afternoon. Hey, Winter. Hey, Desiree. And at first, it was going fine. So, for those of you who don't know, I have a real rocky, a real rocky relationship with my mom. Um, it's been like that my whole life. I will say, it seemed like that's just a cycle. And my, my mom has a rocky relationship with her mom. My grandma had a rock, rocky relationship with my great grandma, but to me, my great grandma was my world. Somebody had just a message about me saying my great grandma was a mammy. My great grandma was a mammy. That's what we call her. They call her mammy. I called her Emily, and she was just a wonderful woman, like to me. But they say prior to her changing her life. She was an alcoholic. She was a drunk. She was the black sheep of the family. I'm also a black. But she was the black sheep of the family. Like her family disowned her. Her husband abused her. She had a black eye every Christmas. She He left her and moved to another state. Married. They never got divorced. So she ended up with all his social security and all his money when he died. But um, she lived in the projects. She was a drunk. That's what they, This is what other people have told me about my great but when I was born, they said my great grandmama stopped drinking when my sister was born. My sister was born. I've never from the time from the time I was born to the time I was twenty six, I had never seen a lady drink liquor a day in her life. And she was just wonderful to me. She understood me. She allowed me to be authentic self she didn't judge me like how i act silly like if y'all see my videos i'm gonna edit some videos i've been out with my mama up and stuff getting on her nerves but if my great grandma was alive like it was like when i act like that she was happy and just joyous she loved my spirit and she allowed me to be myself versus with my mama it's just always been rocky it's just like she ain't never really understood me um she done been through things in her life i feel like it's a conversation that need to be had i do feel like in the black community i'm gonna speak for blacks i'm not gonna speak for white people because i don't know how that is it's not me being racist it's just i'm more so tampa is pretty segregated like white people live in one area, in one area black people live in another area that's just it is here i'm just being honest yeah you got black people that's starting to move out into white neighborhoods but at least it's segregated so that's why i'm gonna to refer to black families but the families i know it seemed like the mother and daughter relationship is always toxic and tarnished it's like my mama hate me that's how i feel like i felt like that since i was little like my mama hate me she said just now she said she was like i don't know we had a little disagreement the disagreement was this my kids are home with their daddy except mcintyre and gorgeous mcintyre and gorgeous went back to daycare this week however i did not want anybody on youtube to know that i sent mcintyre and gorgeous back to daycare because i just didn't want to deal with the judgment like the world is already such a judgy place i want to be able to do what the fuck i want to do i cuss to do what i want to do and not be judged like my family judged me enough. So I had already told my mama that. I told her that yesterday. That's why in the video, first you only see baby. This was at Adventure Island with his dad by himself, choice and daddy. I just had baby. My oldest was playing his game. And then my gorgeous and McIntyre were at daycare. I told my mama yesterday, I don't want nobody to know kids in daycare. I just don't feel like hearing the opinions of others, like just don't bring it up then just now when we were speaking on live we was at you ladies she had already did other stuff to just like offend me and i'm just like letting it slide like okay let's let it slide let's let it slide you know 
But then we just was live. If y'all caught that, we was live. And somebody said, what are the kids said? And I told they with their daddy. And they was like, oh, dad, one thing about daddy, he don't mind watching his kids. You got a good baby daddy. And I said, yeah, my baby father, he don't mind watching his kids. He's active. He allowed, he will watch them for me to chase my dream. Like, first time he's done it. Even when I became a realtor the first time and I had to go to school for seven days, he stopped everything to watch them, like, to chase my dream. Even with YouTube. My kids in daycare. They just started daycare this week. They hadn't been in daycare in he been watching them like he really been watching them but i was like yeah he don't mind watching his kids he'll watch them and she was like child and daycare gonna scream that out on the video i thought i asked you more than once not to cross that that boundary like don't mention that my kids and daycare i already deal with enough shit on youtube to have to deal with that and she did it. and when she did it it just like that was like the shroud that would have kept us back and it just like hurt me and i'm just like i was like you know what i don't even want to finish my food like, I'm just ready to go. I don't even, I can't be around you anymore because it's like you purposely trying to hurt me. She laughed about it. Like, she laughed. She was like, oh, my bad. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. Like, it felt like she did it on purpose to purposely hurt me. And it's not the first time she's done something like this. Shit like this been happening my whole life with my mom. I was even driving. Things. Like, the first time I had a suicidal thought, I was eight years old. I was eight years old when I first had my first suicidal thought where i felt like don't nobody love me i don't want to live i don't i grew up being called fat being called stupid big bertha big mm, good dirty neck my mom used to say my neck was dirty not knowing like it was a diabetes you know when you have the little black spots in your face coming like this black necks that won't come clean if you have that going on that is a sign of diabetes you might want to go get your blood sugar checked but i was told i got i'm fat with a dirty neck they made a joke about this the last time i was around all my family members they made a joke about this like y'all remember peach used to have the dirty neck and um treacy used to have to scrub her neck with alcohol like literally burning my neck with alcohol trying to scrub it like why the black won't go away and they making jokes about even after I done told them, like, that's a sign of diabetes, like, childhood type 2 diabetes that nobody was going to take me to the doctor for. That's a sign of diabetes. Um, like, I tell other people about stuff like this now, or even, like, just embarrassing me. I already had this conversation, and she was busting a joke and laughing about it. I was like, this not funny. Like, the, the shit not funny. It hurts. It's a hurtful feeling and i've been treated like this my whole fucking life and then when i step back from y'all y'all want to pretend like y'all miss me and want me to come around and try to manipulate my kids with money and stuff that we don't need we don't need the money other gifts and then when we come around we come around just to get treated like shit again i'm not finna keep doing this i'm not finna keep doing this it's like people telling me like even when I said my mama was a liar, she was lying. If you lie, you a liar. I'm not going to take that back. Um, I just feel like angry. And then I was thinking about that. I'm like, damn, I had my first suicidal thought when I was eight. They was calling me fat. Nobody ain't like me. She was talking about my daddy. My daddy got 22 kids. 22 kids, a whole bunch of different baby mamas. How many? I don't know. But my sister daddy was like a good daddy he had custody of two of his children and he didn't have that many he probably had like five kids and so he paid his child support he got my sister my brother daddy was the oldest my brother was his dad's oldest child his dad was a big drug lord and my brother had every fucking thing right then it was me the one with the sorry daddy your daddy's sorry i hate your daddy just like when we out eating and somebody asked me about owning a restaurant and I was like, you know, I've had the idea to own a restaurant before, which is true. My grandmothers on my daddy's side, they're both deceased now. They owned a restaurant for years. They owned a, a restaurant, a black restaurant, and it was very busy. And my mom was like, that food was nasty. They couldn't cook. Their food was nasty. She been doing shit like that to me my whole life like my family wasn't good enough my daddy's side of the family wasn't good enough i can't never get rid of your ass everybody else gone i can't get rid of your ass and then when i speak about stuff like this they like to say oh she just playing a victim oh she just sensitive oh she just dramatic it's like no this is my fucking reality like 
this is my reality and i don't want to deal with this shit and don't nobody deserve to be treated like this and i don't understand like if and i ha it's not like it's a secret like i i can vocalize for myself i tell them how i feel just like when i said i used to buy everything i used to pay their bills like i've had money i used to pay their bills walk up to my mama get her two thousand dollars and be like oh and can you watch my kids she jump up for joy for the money oh thank you give me a hug and i said oh can you watch my kids for an hour can you watch my kids for a couple hours so me and daddy could do x y and z she's like no i ain't watching your kids i don't like him i'm not watching your kids like that's the kind of shit i deal with i am mad about this myself like i don't treat my kids like this my daughter i just made a video today i didn't post it when I was thinking about my hair, a lot of people got so much to say about my hair. Y'all want to be like, oh, she don't care about herself, how she keep her hair. This is my natural fucking hair. It grows from my scalp like this. I have all of my edges. My hair is healthy. It's thick. It's really long if I blow it out. What is wrong with me walking around with my hair like this? It's nothing wrong with me walking around with my hair like this. My hair is beautiful. My family act the same way. I feel like y'all is so ignorant. And it's black women that do this to me it's not white women white people say i love your hair i don't see anything wrong with your hair it's black women oh you a disgrace the black women walk around with your hair like that my daughter when she was two gorgeous ain't been around my family she done turned three in july she ain't been around my family none of my kids i stopped going around them i hadn't been around my mama in over two months going on three months because i'm just like this is abuse i'm not my 12 year old made me realize that my 12 year old said mom I tried to make him go to my sister's baby party. She had a baby party. I forced my 12-year-old to go. And he was, like, really upset about the crowd. I'm like, this your family. You know, you need to go support, have fun at the party. And he said, Mom, if every time I come around somebody, they hurt my feelings, why are you forcing me to be around them? I don't want to be around people who hurt my feelings. I could go to my own house, eat my own food, play my own video game, and be happy. And he 12. I am 31 years old and it took for my 12 year old to say that for me to realize that I don't have to fucking go around y'all to be happy. And so since then I stopped being around them but my daughter is, at the time she was two, if my daughter go around without her hair done, how y'all seen Gorgeous yesterday with her little pony puffs, the first thing they say they won't even speak. They'll say, oh your mama need to do your hair. What you doing walking around with your hair like that? That's her real fucking hair. Her real hair what's wrong with her real hair her real hair is beautiful it's in a ponytail it's neat or it's decent even if it ain't neat because i can't do you know how i don't part that good but i comb to how her hair is fine people say stuff on youtube about my baby hair they're like oh she don't never comb the baby hair as you i comb baby's hair he is natural i wash his hair he is natural just like his mama his hair is very curly y'all be worrying about the wrong fucking things trying to break people's spirit and make them hate themselves because you hate yourself i'm not gonna continue to deal with this i'm not and i told her that we just went shopping i might still edit the videos and upload the videos we just went shopping she bought my baby she bought baby five pair of shoes yesterday i told y'all my mama do not watch my kids my mama would rather buy my kids stuff than watch them my grandma them the same way they are like my kids can't come in the house and i don't like that somebody want somebody on youtube gonna comment oh i wouldn't let your kids come to my house either they untrained and this and this they fucking kids y'all don't be wanting people to sit on y'all furniture y'all value furniture more than y'all value people like my great grandma always told me you cannot take furniture with you when you die like we can't sit on the furniture grew up not sitting on the furniture grew up can't sit at the table to eat y'all seen yesterday i can't sit at my mama table i'm 31 years old i cannot sit at my mama table to eat food i have to sit she let me sit on a bar stool yesterday but i have to sit on the floor or sit outside on the porch and that's been like that my whole life i told my mama when she died i wanted her furniture and i was gonna jump on it like i'm gonna jump on your furniture when you die but my daughter, I tell Gorgeous every day, her hair is beautiful. I tell all my kids that you're per you're beautiful the way you are. You're perfect. Your hair is beautiful. Your real natural hair is beautiful. It's beautiful. I think I'm fucking beautiful. I don't care if you don't like my hair. You don't like my hair. You don't like that I walk around my hair like that. Why are you watching it? Why are you watching it? 
you mentally fucked up. You understand that y'all mentally messed up in the head. Ain't no way somebody could disrupt my spirit and I'm going to continue to watch them. That's just crazy to me. But she did that. She ended up saying that and then she laughed about it. And then she was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. My bad. Like, kiki, like a high key. And I'm like, I'm ready to go. I just, I don't, I'm just, I can't be around you, mama. I'm ready to go. Like, I got to get away from you. And she just like, I don't understand this. Why are you so upset? It's like, I had this conversation with you more than once to not mention that. And she was like, I forgot. You can't get mad at me because I forgot. I'm like, how can you forget something that I done told you more than once? Like, you hurting me on purpose. And then we walked outside and she was like, I just don't understand why you always think that I'm hurting you like why you think i hurt you on purpose why you think i'm out to get you i truly feel like this lady is out to get me it's been like i remember one time i had money like i've had money a lot of times i had money and my mama i was looking for a car i wanted a nissan maxima that was my dream car a few years ago that's my dream car i was like i want me a nissan maxima i want me a nissan maxima me and my mama looking for me a nissan maxima can't find one that i like so one day i'm just home sleep this one I was pregnant with choice. I'm home sleep. My mama called me. She like, Peaches, I done bought a car. I'm like, you bought a car? She was like, yeah, I done bought a car. I said, what kind of car you bought? She said, oh, I bought a Nissan Maxima. I say, oh, I was looking for a Nissan Maxima. You already had a car. Why you ain't call and tell me about the Nissan? Like, that's what I was looking for. You know, that's my dream car. She was like, oh, because it was perfect for me. I saw it. It was perfect for me. Um yeah but the thing is i need some extra money i was wondering if you could give me the rest of the money to pay for the car i'll pay you back do you know i got out of my bed and i went and paid for my mama this car she didn't even want to give me my money back it took like three months to get my money back from her she didn't even want to give me my money back this was the car that i wanted my dream car you go buy it you see it instead of calling me you go buy it and then you want me to pay for it for you because you don't put some money down and i go pay off the car then i gotta wait months to get my money back then when i'm asking for my money i'm an ungrateful child i should just do x y and z for you another time it was a um bedroom set i wanted from bad cop my mama still got this bed to this day it was a bedroom set i wanted for bad cop we went into the bedroom set was like seven thousand dollars and i wanted to buy it in cash and i was like if i buy it in cash can y'all give me a discount x y and z and they said oh no it's the same price. It don't matter if you get it with credit or if you buy it with cash. It's the same price. My mom was like, girl, don't buy that bed. That bed too much money. You shouldn't buy that bed. Uh-uh, that's too much money, etc. They ain't trying to give you no deal. Go to Ashley's or something. We went to Ashley's. I ended up finding another bedroom set that I kind of liked. I liked the, the bedroom, the first bedroom set better. But I ended up getting a bedroom set I kind of liked. Because she said, I'm buying with cash. I need a deal. Ashley's gave me a better deal for buying with cash. Yeah, I bought my bedroom set about four days later i go to my mama house she like oh come upstairs i go upstairs this lady got the bed that i was gonna buy this bed lady got the bed that i was gonna buy i'm like i was just finna buy this bed and you told me it was too much money she said yeah it was too much money for you <laughs> i can afford it too much money for you i can afford it this is the type of shit that my mama been doing to me my whole life i ain't trying to I ain't trying to bash my mama. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to make nobody hate my mama. I just want to under, want you to understand why I don't deal with my mama. When people are like, oh, I love your relationship with my mama. I hate it. My mama would send me pictures of me when I was depressed. My hair was done. My hair was done. My nails might have been done. But mentally, mentally, I was broken. Spiritually broken. And she'll send them to me and be like, I miss this peaches. And I'm like, that Peaches is dead. I never want to be this girl. Can you not send me pictures like that? When you send me pictures like that, it hurts. Because I don't want to be that girl. That girl in that state of mind was fucked up. I don't want to be that girl. Then she want to be like, I, I don't understand. Like, at least you cared about how you look. It's way more than a person flesh. I don't give a fuck about this. I don't like, they don't even got on my Michael Kors watch. Like, I don't care about materialistic stuff. I really don't. I've had money. People are like, oh, she money hungry. She did, she that. I need money to take care of my kids. I need money to, um, my mouth getting so dry. 
I need to get a word out to Trump. But I need money to get to take care of my kids and to buy my house and stuff like that. That's what I need money for. But I don't love money. Like I don't have money and never change. I people say, oh, don't change when I haven't changed. What will happen is people around you will change. They will make you feel like you think you better than them. They will make you feel like you don't deserve to have good shit when you deserve to have nothing but good shit why i don't deserve to have good stuff why i don't deserve to be happy and i even remember when i had money like i bought my son a dirt bike for his birthday his birthday in november my oldest son bought him a dirt bike for his birthday come december my mom and my sister buy my nephew a dirt bike anything i buy my children my nephew my mama and my sister go buy my nephew for their kids like they go copy anything i buy my children they copy but when it comes to me let's say if i don't have the money for something and my mama or my sister my sister kids get it my mama won't go run out and buy it for my kids she'll be like they don't need that you ain't got no your children ain't like that they don't care it's like everybody want to have more than me and be better than me and when i get more than them they make me feel guilty for having more than them but it's like this time i'm not gonna feel like that and this time when I walk away from my mama again, because I'm not finna be talking to her, that is what it is. I left everything. My mama bought me a candle today. She bought baby five pair of shoes. And I bought some hand sanitizer with my own money. And she bought me lunch. But after she took me back to my car, because I was riding with her, I left everything. She was like, how you going to leave the shoes I bought your baby? I said, I don't want them. I don't want nothing to do with you. And I know that that seemed harsh. Even when I was thinking about not dealing with my family no more. I research a lot. I read a lot. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. And you hear about kids stepping away from their families. It's mostly white people. You don't really see black people step away from their families. It's like if you do, you get shunned. You get bashed for stepping away from somebody who's hurting you. Like this shit not healthy. This shit not healthy. Every time I go around them, they pointing out flaws in me. Flaws in my children. I don't ever, like I said, the first time I ever heard my mama say I'm proud of you was when she watched a video of me making donuts with my kids. And she was like, oh, I'm so jealous. I wish I would have made donuts with y'all. You so active. You're a good mom. That was my first, I'm 31. My oldest child is 12. The first time I ever hear my mama say I'm a good mom and she proud of me is when my child 12 years old. And you see a YouTube video. And then even with this journal. If y'all seen that other live. With this journal. I'm very grateful. And I like this journal. I was just thinking about this. When I was driving. And I was talking to myself. And crying. Like this journal. It says she believed she could. So she did. I post this a lot. I live by this slogan right now. Anything I believe in my mind. Will come true. Because I believe it that much. Molly's mom. Miss so Sonia bought me this. Right. And I was very stoked. Let me show y'all what my mama bought me. Just so y'all could see why she was mad. And why she was saying. When she said, oh, oh you jumping up and down. Fuck, this my thousand dollar hoopty, y'all. When she said, you jumping up and down for joy because of what she bought you. You ain't act like that about the journal I bought you. I love journals. This is something I always do. Like the journal I'm currently writing in is just this. I Like I love, I write all the time i really don't share my feelings how i'm on here sharing my feelings with y'all i really don't do that i write in this this is my daily planner i write in this i don't go anywhere without the stuff this is what my mama bought me okay i got me a water so this is what my mama bought me this book right here it's um 365 days prayer for women right my mama bought me this book Molly's mom bought me this. Now, my mom was mad because when she bought me this, and I just opened it on my last live this morning, my first live this morning, and I opened it, and I was so excited. I was about to cry. I was like, I can't believe she put so much thought in this gift. It said she believed she could, so she did. And, like, this is the saying that I'm living by right now. I live by this. I live by this. I say this to myself every single day. And pink is my favorite color. And this is pink. And so this meant the world to me. And I was looking at something with some gold in it at Hobby Lobby. So I know she put a lot of thought 
into this gift even though it's a simple little journal it's a simple journal and it had a message let me read y'all the message this is what the message said it says hey peachy peach the journal is for you to write your goals and aspiration in spoken dreams come true i'm proud of you Send, sending hugs from tennessee miss sonia aka molly's mom from molly's mom right so that gift was very thoughtful my mama i just started back talking to her the other day she was like oh peach is going my trunk first of all she was like going my trunk i bought you a book so i'm like oh, okay she bought me a book she had this journal in here this gray one and she had a pink one so pink is my favorite color instinctively i pick up the pink book i'm like oh this is pink and it's talking about prayer you know i just recently got saved again and i'm you know trying to get my life right and working on my relationship with god and religion because there was a point in time where i stopped believing in god so i'm like okay that was very thoughtful she said oh no put that back that ain't for you that ain't for you she said, i put the pink one back she said look at the other bag and then it was this great one and i'm like oh, okay it's a great book you know it still got prayer it's great i was still like appreciative like okay thank you but i really was a little bit sad like dang i wish i could have got the pink one and so when i got this one this pink one it just like i couldn't believe that she was this sentimental and listen <laughs> i'm laughing and i'm crying because it's like when you've been talking about stuff your whole life and they don't listen to you like I can I can explain it. I don't know if y'all understand how I feel right now. But it's like for somebody to listen this much to you and your own family, your own mama don't listen this much to you. Your own mama don't care this much for you. Like this made me feel special. And my mama, she was really upset. She was like, even when we were shopping, she was like, I can't believe you up there jumping for joy about that book. You ain't act like that about my present about this book like i still opened it i read a couple pages and then i had to bring up the fact that when i wrote my first book my first book get out your feelings and get this money i wrote it i formatted it and i edited it all by myself with three kids at home two of them home 24 7 son just diagnosed with autism i wrote that book i sold a lot of copies it's now in barnes and nobles and stuff and my mama didn't buy it until this year when it became available in Barnes and Nobles and somebody on Facebook was like, they can't believe my book in Barnes and Nobles. Then she bought a copy. But prior to that, my mama never bought a copy of my book. You know how that hurt? And now that she got a copy, she keep it in her trunk and the window part of the trunk ain't never ready. Ain't never ready. That hurts. Like, I'm your fucking child. That's what I want to say. I'm your child. That hurts me. And I remember even, I think that's another reason why this was like, so sentimental to me because i was driving thinking about it i remember one christmas my mama asked us what we wanted for christmas my brother and sister wanted jordans and jewelry i've never been that kind of person i'm not into jordans i'm not into jewelry that's just not who i am i've never been that girl like i always had access to that stuff i'm trying to open this water i always had access to that stuff that's just not what i ever wanted and I remember that one Christmas, my mama's like, what y'all want for Christmas? And my sister said, I wanted Jordan's jewelry money. And I said, oh, mama, it'll mean the world to me if you would just buy me this journal. I want a pink journal, and I want the journal to say peaches. I want, I want peaches engraved in the journal because I'm going to be a writer, and I just love to write my feelings and my songs and my poems. Like, that's all I want for Christmas. It's less than $100. That's all I want for Christmas, right? Do y'all know for Christmas, this lady bought me jewelry. She bought me a bracelet that said peaches. She bought me a big old chain. Like, she spent thousands of dollars on jewelry. And on Christmas morning, when I opened it, I was crying. And I was like, what my journal? Like, that's all I wanted. I wanted a journal. And boo crying. And she was like, you so ungrateful. You're ungrateful, fat ass. You stupid bitch. Like, that's how I got talked to growing up. Growing up. I got talked to any kind of way. I got called stupid bitches, fat bitches, stupid hoes. I ain't get beat. I got verbally assassinated, verbally abused. And I try to not do that with my kids. I have to make the choice every day to not do that with my kid. Now, like I said, I ain't trying to do this to bash my mama. 
because I had to learn to understand where she came from. My mama had a rough upbringing. Her mama had a rough upbringing. My great grandma had a very rough upbringing. My great grandmother is one of 16 children. Her mother died giving birth to her 17th child. Her stepmother mistreated her. My great grandma had to drop out of school at like sixth grade and get married and shit like that. So she had a rough life. So knowing that these generations before me had a rough life, it allows me to have compassion. Hey, cousin Amber, thank you for the super chat. She said a lot of what you said is so common in our community, especially black mothers. I come from the South. I can relate. So with my, um, with my great grandmother, I understand this and I appreciate my great grandma. I love my great grandma. Can't nobody tell me nothing bad about her because I didn't experience what they experienced with her and she showed me so much about life but it allows me to have compassion for my mama but without my mama willingness to change I can't fuck with her I cussed yes I did I can't fuck with her I mean that from the from the bottom of my heart like mama I love you but I can't be messed up with you I can't I can't hang out with you you don't even want me in your space you would think after not seeing your grandkids for two months and talking about how much you miss them and all this stuff and they come to your house and they there for less than 25 minutes you talking about you ready for them to get out your house and ready for them to go you would think you would be so excited to see them you would think you would be so joyous to have them in the space they don't like me they don't like my kids and that's something my grandma always said and my mom always said they said if a person does not like you they do not like their kids i had to realize I think a lot of us are in doubt about this because it's ugly. Your mama could hate you. The person that gave you birth can hate you. It took me a, a minute to realize and accept that it hurts. And she could say, like, that's not the case. She could be like, I don't hate you. I love my child. That's my child. Your actions show me that you hate me. The shit that you do and you think it's comical show me that you hate me and maybe i am overly sensitive but i feel like not feel like i know like this is what it is this is what it is i feel like that's the reality i'm the first person in my family on my mama's side to graduate high school they talk about me like a dog they say i'm stupid they say i'm dirty they say i got too many kids that I don't care about myself. I got low self-esteem. Like they say so much shit about me. And it was it took for me to start stepping back from them. When I start stepping back from them. And I start observing those things. I had to realize. I'm like girl you not stupid. Girl you graduated from high school. The only one in this stupid ass family. Yes I called them stupid. I'm venting right now. Y'all got to excuse my mouth. Get the kids out the room. But the only one in this family. To graduate high school yeah i'm the dummy <laughs> like make that make sense i'm the one that went to college i might ain't finished college the first one to go to college and i'm the dummy like people will trick you you be thinking that it's strangers and thank y'all for the super chats i'm sorry y'all let me thank y'all properly y'all ain't gotta super chat me cash at me when y'all do i appreciate it so i try to properly thank y'all i'm sorry thank you to corporate housewife for the 4.99 super chat and thank you to Brianna Williams for the 299 super chat. I appreciate y'all, but um I just had to realize that I tell this story all the time. I tell this story to my kids about my shoes. I had on some Timberland boots, me and my baby father. My baby father, he put on his Tims first. And I thought, I really like this. Mukbang is that thing said, and this is why God is blessing you publicly. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Um but I remember my cousin had, I had on some Tims. My baby father put his on first. After he put on his Timberland boots, I was like, dang, he look good in his Tims. I'm going to wear my Tims today. I put on my Tims. I had them for about three years, but I only wore them once or twice a year. It's Florida. It don't get that cold. So I put on my Timberland boots. We went to my great grandma house where all my family is. Thank you, Crystal. My cash app is this, this is Peach. Um, we went to my great grandma house. When we get over there, my cousin, he say, my older cousin, he say, um, man, look at pictures with them big ass Timberland boots. She got them big ass boots on. She looks stupid in them big ass boots. 
my baby father busting out laughing, <laughs> laughing. You know, I walked out the house. I felt like, oh, I love me. I look good today. My baby daddy got on his tins. We his and her day. We look cute, right? I feel good. When I left out the house, I felt wonderful. When he started talking about my boots, I started to go like from here to here, right? My baby daddy started laughing at the jokes. I went here. Then he was like, kept making jokes, kept making jokes. The whole family laughing. So now my confidence level is at a zero. I feel like I hate these boots. I shouldn't have these boots. Why would my baby daddy even let me walk outside with these boots with these big ass feet? And I look a mess like I really started feeling real small about myself. And a few minutes later, after he seen, oh, I got a feeling sorry for stuff. I got a feeling what I got a way I want them. He said, yeah, you don't need them boots. And they my size. What size they is there? Nine, yeah, that's my size. You know what? I buy them for you. I buy them boots for you for $50. Now, me thinking, well, I wasn't in, in my mental state. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. These boots, they over $200 in the store. However, I done had them for a couple years. Everybody laughing at me. I barely wear them. Everybody laughing, saying my feet look big in them. I don't need them anyways. And he offered me $50 for them. So, I take the 50 I'm like, shoot, $50. You can have these boots come up out the boots. Put on my baby dad loafers, his polo loafers that was in the car, and I take the fifty dollars, give him the tims. And when I do that, my baby dad get upset. When we get in the car, he like, how stupid can you be? Like, peaches, them two hundred dollar shoes ain't nothing wrong with them Timberland boots. Like, they look the nice. I say, well, if they look the nice, why you was laughing at the jokes? He was like, because the jokes was funny, but I said it was funny at my expense. It was hurting my feelings. Like, I thought everybody was laughing at me and I didn't need to boost them. He was like, man, you stupid. You let him manipulate you. And I analyzed that situation and I started thinking about how people will manipulate you and how I've been letting people manipulate me my whole life. Thank you to Miss Antoinette for the cash app. She said, because you are amazing. Thank you so much for the cash app and thank you, Ryan, for the 499 super chat. I appreciate y'all. Like I say, I ain't doing this for super chat money or cash app money. When y'all do it, I appreciate y'all, but it's not necessary. If you can't do it, liking my videos, I appreciate sharing my videos. I appreciate being kind to me, spreading love, encouraging other people that's like me, that's in your life and your presence. I appreciate. Um, but I started thinking about my whole life, how people been manipulating me out of my greatness. Even when I had money, that same cousin that bought them boots. When I had money, I'll never forget my great grandma when she was alive. I fixed their roof. I'm sorry, y'all. It's like buffering. I don't know. Can y'all see me now? But I was like fixing up my grandma's house. I put mulch down in the yard. I bought my cousins that was homeless, my grown adult cousins that was homeless and sleeping on my grandma's furniture. So they wouldn't have to sleep on a new furniture. I bought them bunk beds and they was grown men. I bought them bunk beds. I put light switches in their room, like made it nice. And I took pictures. I was very proud. I took pictures. I put it on my um, Instagram very proud and my grandma she was very happy about it she my great grandma she was grateful and proud excuse me my cousin was boo crying tears the same cousin that bought my tims he said grandma peach is trying to get rid of us they were selling dope out my grandma house he was like peach is trying to get rid of us not to my great grandma but to her daughter and she was like what you mean she's trying to get she trying to make it nice and trying to make it well we can't come over here no more boo who cried tears a grown man boo who cried tears still so guilty they all did they made me feel like i was wrong for fixing up my grandma house so i stopped i was like forget this i stopped i stopped coming around then i stopped this is not the first time i have not talked to my mom the longest i went without talking to my mama is five months i didn't talk to my mama for five months i stopped dealing with them and working on my mental health and it felt good and i was at a better place in life and um they start calling my baby father, begging him to bring the kids, begging us to come around. And I'm not stepping back from my mama because I want her to babysit. She don't watch my kids. She'll buy them anything. Like, my kids don't even ask people to buy them stuff. I'm just, I'm not that person. I'm not finna call you and be like, Mom, can you buy me X, Y, Z? I don't do that. I don't ask nobody for nothing. I'm very prideful like that. Like, I'd rather do it on my own. Um, But my sister, them, they get everything from my mama. My big sister, my mama spoil my sister's kids and watch them. You are the light and let one and let one dim your brightness let no one dim your brightness thank you for the super chat and the message shady um but a lot of y'all going through the same thing stop letting people manipulate you out of your greatness i'm not doing that no more 
I'm not. I feel like what my mama just did came from an evil, nasty place. A evil, nasty place. I shouldn't have to disclose that. Thank you, Erica, for the cash app. She said, God loves you. Um, God loves you. His love does not change. And then waxing with Donisha, she said, I can relate. My family treated me like the black sheep because God created us to shine and we do. You have to know that it's okay to cut people off and still love them from a difference. That This heartbreak hit different. Yeah. Because it's not, I don't, I don't hate them. I just know I'm different. My cousin even said that to me one time. He was like, Peaches, sometimes God, my oldest cousin, he said, sometimes God will make your family hate you because he don't want you to be like them. He was like, sometimes God will make us mistreat you so you can hate coming around here so you can come up out of this. Like, you ain't got to be like us. And I'm like, but why y'all can't love me? Like, I just couldn't understand that. Like, why they can't love me? My family loves strangers. My great grandma always said that. My great grandma used to be like, I can't wait to die to get away from this toxic family. Like y'all love outsiders more than family. Y'all need to love family. Thank you, Blue Blood of Fire. She said, baby girl, I wish I could give you a huge hug right now. Thank you. And then fashion is me. She said, you have to know God has bigger plans for you. It's all right to cry, but just know God is not done with you yet. The devil is busy. Stay woke. Thank you. I don't hate my mama i just can't deal with it and my mama got her own story to tell i'm not one of those people like this is what happened like i always ask mama can i tell your business i really do because i don't like telling people business like they secrets without their permission like that's her own story to tell but it hurts like she need to seek her healing and we done had these conversations more than once um I've been holding everybody's secrets my whole life. I've been everybody's therapist my whole life. I've been knowing about the world my whole life. My great grandma raised me. And I sometimes I say that too. Like yesterday, and my mama get mad when I say that. I say my great grandma raised me. I've never been in foster care. My mama ain't never been no crackhead or nothing like that. But my mama did live in the streets. My mama went to the club. My mama could go to the club seven days a week. My mama could drop us off to my great grandma with no food no money and my great grandma was gonna make it shape my great grandma was gonna cook us some pancakes with her flour and her egg and her milk like she was gonna make her own batter for the pancakes and she was gonna make sure all 19 kids at her house ate we was gonna have jelly on them pancakes or peanut butter on them pancakes if it wasn't syrup she if our mamas didn't come back from the club leave us for a whole week at her house without calling us without calling us my great grandma was gonna hand wash them same uniform clothes over and over and not complain i ain't never seen this lady complain about doing it and pardon me for wishing somebody to do those things for me i can't even get a break like i said me and daddy ain't been on a date with each other just us two without kids in a whole year and i ain't saying like oh feel sorry for me because we had these kids and we're responsible but it does take a village to raise children and i ain't got one daddy is my village like daddy do everything for my kids if he don't got them i got them we just we tag team in this parents and stuff but versus my mama them my mama them my mama my auntie my cousins and even their friends would leave their kids with my great grandma and not pay her a penny and she took care of us and ain't nothing happened to us i never got raped or anything like that my great grandma never neglected me like i never hurt for nothing and she loved me unconditionally y'all unconditionally so i say i do take that in account now in my mental like when i think about how my mama don't want to watch my kids i'd be like oh you ain't raise your own kids you ain't watch your own kids that might sound mean and harsh but she didn't she ain't watch us so it's like it ain't like oh she somebody was like oh I'm older now. Some one of the subbies they had agreed. They was like, "Oh, I'm older now. I raise my kids. I ain't gotta be bothered with my grandkids." It's like my mama ain't have us like that. You got a break. You got to live your life. I don't know what it's like to live your life. I had my first child at 18, and I've been a mom since 18. I've been with my kid every day. Probably I only not been around him when I went to Vegas for work, and when I um had babies that's the only time my oldest son ain't been at home with me i've always been around all of my kids baby has never spent the night with nobody baby one even to be one next Tuesday, he's never not been with me 
versus my mama. She ain't, she ain't have us. She ain't have us. And she get mad when I want to have these kind of conversations. It's like, you ain't talked to me well since I was little. I remember asking my mama when I used to be in school. I could have, like, work. I could go to my mama and be like, Mom, can you help me with this? And she'd be like, bitch, get your fat ass out of my face. I'm talking to my friends. Don't you see I'm hanging with my friends, smoking her weed or whatever, like, doing her. My great-grandma, who ain't even finished high school, ain't even finished sixth grade, would be like, come here, baby, and she'll try to help me with my work. My great-grandma mean the world to me. I wish I could get her back. I can't. I can't never get her back. But that's who I feel like was the only person who loved me. Like, right now, how I'm feeling, I would be able to go to my great-grandma and just break down and cry. And she will hold me and she'll be like, Tracy ain't, Tracy know that shit ain't right. That's what she'll say. Tracy know that shit ain't right and pat me on my back. Y'all, the world to have that back. But, um, it's just, uh, I just wanted to talk to y'all about it, I guess. If you is going through, through that, I just want you to know it's okay to walk away from your family. You don't have to feel guilty about it i'm not gonna let none of y'all make me feel guilty about it and even when i think about my relationships because one of the things my mama liked to do she liked to bring up my relationship with my baby father she'll be like oh but you let him do x y and z but you do this you do that it's like even before i had a relationship with my baby father i had a relationship with my mother and that relationship was bad and you all have to remember like i take parenting classes by choice not because of CPS or anything like that by choice. Because I want to be the best mother I could be. I want to break these generational curses. I want to break this cycle, right? And in order to do that, I know I need outside support. Because I can't go to nobody in my family for advice like this. They all fucked up. I'm just being honest. They all parent the way my mama parented. So I have to go outside and use outside resources to learn how to do things differently. I read a lot. I write a lot. I look at YouTube videos. I do parenting classes. I take advantage of every free resource that I qualify for. So I I was taking parenting classes. They had me write down all of my goals. They asked me to write down every characteristic that I would want in my child. Write down five qualities you want for your child. Well, I want my children to have good ethics and morals. I want them to love themselves. I want them to be ambitious. I want them to be successful. Like you write down all your goals. Then after you do that, like everything you want in your children. After that, you got to think, do you have those things? Do you have those things? And I realized, no, I don't have self, self love. I had to learn to love myself. No, I don't have good work ethic. I had to stop being lazy. Like, and every day I have to remember these things and I have to do everything mentally. I can't just wake up and be like, like being a good, like even let's say with credit. Let's go with credit. My mama them from the projects. Her mom was from the projects. My great grandmama lived in the projects. Ain't none of them own no house. I cannot go to them for financial literacy. They don't know. I cannot. People can only give you what, what they got. So even when it comes to the way my mama treat me, she done mentioned even yesterday she was mistreated as a child she said it out her own mouth so i cannot go to her for certain things and i think a lot of y'all got to realize that too it helped me a lot when i stopped trying to go to my mama for things that i know she can't give me and i feel like a fool for even hanging out with her these past two days i said i was gonna try to use her to cook on my channel so you know I could teach y'all to make homemade macaroni and cheese the way my mama do it because she make good homemade macaroni and cheese. But in the process, I ended up with my feelings hurt and I, un, you know, some, some wounds that was healing. We just pulled the band-aid off and dug in them. Now they hurt again. So now I got to go back and I got to do some writing and some reading and some positive thinking, watching and all that. This stuff is not no one day thing. It's just like forgiveness. It's like, I'm going to have to work on this for the rest of my life. But I have to think, even when it comes to financial literacy, I have to think about it. It's not something natural. It's not like I grew up seeing people own houses, so I know when I grow up, I'm going to own a house. Or it's not like when I parent my kids, I have to mentally think about when I parent my kids. I have to watch everything I say. I cannot just lash out. If I just 
get mad and lash out, it'll be, you stupid bitches, y'all dumbass. I hate you motherfuckers. That's what I grew up hearing, okay? I have to mentally like, okay, I can't. I have to be silent. I have to think about what I'm going to do. I might have to go sit down and write about what I think I need to do. Then I can go have those conversations. Like, let me talk to you. Listen, I need to talk to you because of X, Y, and Z. Another thing with my mom, just like I'm talking to y'all, I could try to have these conversations with her. She can never take accountability for these things. Like, anything 